There is a there are there are a series of hearings going on in Washington today, and just to, to give you kind of a quick uh, update, uh, one of them is uh, taking place right now. It's dealing with uh, with how the United States will deal with uh, with ISIS or ISIL, as President Obama calls it. There's a reason he calls it that, by the way, and it has something to do with his own childhood and upbringing. But we'll get to that a little later because following nine o'clock news today, we're going to be joined by Lieutenant Colonel Steve Heil. He's retired from the U.S. Air Force. Never shy, though, about his feelings about certain issues. And, of course, one time during his life was a resident of a state not too far from us. He lived in Nevada for a couple of years while he was uh, the executive officer with the Air Force Thunderbirds and has uh, lived all over the world, has worked on Capitol Hill as the liaison from from uh, the Pentagon, uh, well, from the Air Force at the Pentagon to, to Congress, members of the House and Senate. Uh, he was the administrator of the Shuttle Challenger Commission, so he knows – what he's talking about, and he's a bit of a heavyweight, or was a bit of a heavyweight on the Washington scene, and he's going to share some thoughts with us about the president's remarks yesterday, as well as the Russian planes that buzzed the California coast on Independence Day, and that rainbow flag that's flying at an air base in Arizona. So some of those topics are coming up. That will be in the next hour. Steve Millington will not join us today. Steve is actually fulfilling a very important civic responsibility. He has jury duty which is a wonderful thing. And a lot of people, of course, don't like jury duty, would like to try to to get away from jury duty, but uh, I would look forward to doing something like that in my life. I've I've only been called once, and then I didn't make the final cut. Uh, A couple of other times I was dismissed pretty much before I was even at the courthouse when they discovered what I did for a living and thought I could not be objective. (laughs) Gee, I wonder why. How would they ever get that impression? But anyway, no sign of Steve today, but we'll see him again coming up next week. He'll be with us on Tuesday morning as he is is on most weeks, and he'll take some time out and talk a little bit about some of the local political scene as well as what's going on across the state and perhaps nationally. I wanted to open up today, though, on a story. I got got details on this uh, from an emailer yesterday after I got off air. I think this is related somewhat. To the story that happened in San Francisco over the weekend, where a young woman walking with her father on a on a boardwalk was shot and killed by a man who now admits to doing it. The accused, we say in media, the accused or the alleged shooter, but he has admitted doing it, claimed he was shooting at seals or something like that, and he is here illegally in this country. He's been deported nearly half a dozen times. And a lot of people are saying this this underscores what we've been talking about, many of us on the American right, and, and even though I would not consider Donald Trump to be a right-wing politician, he certainly made a lot of headlines talking about this very subject, and what it has done is it has underscored what he's been talking about when he in, in his blunt way, even though you've got people who are angry, even in his own party at him, and most of the establishment media are ticked off because how dare he tell the truth. And that's essentially, if you look at his comments, of course, they're cherry-picking, you know, the, the, the various, uh, it's shortening the quote, whatever you will, in order to give the impression. Over at the one major newspaper, they're showing the most unbecoming picture of Trump over and over and over again. That's an editorial judgment. You know, again, I said yesterday, this guy is one of the most photographed human beings of the late 20th century and certainly the early 21st century, and yet they, they find the most unbecoming photograph out of the thousands they may have available in their archives, and they use that because they're trying to send some subliminal messages here. Uh, and, and obviously, I, is it intentional? Well, I would say yes. On the other hand, it also shows, even if it isn't, the mindset we're dealing with with mainstream media. You, you'd never see a photograph of President Obama with his mouth hanging open while a fly was trying to crawl into it. You know, I'm just I'm sharing that with you. It, it, it's not going to happen. They'll show you photographs of him doing his Mussolini pose with the jaw sticking forward, looking at the sky and the like, but you will not see any unbecoming photographs of the president. So talking about that case in San Francisco, as we did yesterday, and it's been getting attention all over the country, somebody sent me this, a little closer to home. From the website Creeping Sharia, here's the headline, Utah, and then there's a colon. Well, no, there are, there are a lot of colons, mainly in in California, actually, but not many in, in well, just different different use of the word. Muslim teen refugee raped two women, no sentence and no deportation yet. 
a teenage Somali refugee facing prison after pleading guilty to sexual assault and kidnapping charges in adult court, will remain in a secure juvenile detention center until he nears age 21, a Utah judge said Tuesday. The decision delays a sentencing hearing for 18-year-old Muhammad Ali Muhammad on his adult criminal conviction until October of 2017. He will turn 21 in early 2018. Muhammad, who has been housed at the Wasatch Youth Center since 2012 after pleading guilty to assaults on two women on successive days in 2011 when he was just 14. He faces a sentence of up to life in prison on the rape charge in terms of 1 to 15 years each on the sexual assault and kidnapping counts. On August 14, 2011, that was my dad's birthday, the teen allegedly came up behind a woman who was outside her house with a dog and held a four-inch switchblade to her throat. He threatened to cut her if she screamed, the charge of state, then raped her behind the home. The following night, the boy broke into another woman's house. He looked through drawers in the home before he raped the woman. According to charging documents, the teen then forced the woman to go to an ATM and withdraw $400 for him, the charge of state. Now, he was a Somali uh, Islamic refugee, so he was not here illegally. You know, technically, the, he was resettled by, uh, by, by a resettlement agency. Did we mention it yesterday that the fellow who was actually in charge of the resettlement office here in, uh, in, in uh, our portion of Idaho has actually also, he may still, but he has actually worked for that Utah refugee office. And, uh, and I wonder, did he resettle this kid who ended up coming here and raping women and uh, threatening their lives and stealing from them and kidnapping them? Did he bring that guy here and resettle him here? I'm, I'm just, I'm just, just a question I'm throwing out there. So it tells you that there are people out there culturally who we're bringing into this country, and the question has been, do we vet them properly? Now, in the California case, it's a guy who should have never been here. This whole sanctuary city program runs counter to federal law, and yet you've got a federal government that will not enforce it, will not enforce federal law. They allow this to go on, wink, wink, nod, nod, you know, uh, nudge, nudge, because the Democrats who are winking at it, they want those votes of those people, and, and since we can no longer challenge these voter ID laws get shot down every time they go before a court. We can no long, longer challenge if people are here legitimately or not. You understand how this works. Two other items I have. Received these in an email yesterday as well. These are resolutions, and I'll just read a little bit from them if I could. I don't want to do too much reading this morning, uh, but they're local resolutions. Uh, this one is from uh, a portion. I wouldn't say all of the entire Twin Falls County Republican Committee but it is coming from some members of that committee. And I'm going to move down here a little bit. I'm not going to give you all of it, but it says, whereas in areas of refugee resettlement, as diverse as Rotherham, England, Vancouver, Canada, and Minneapolis, Minnesota, refugee resettlement has resulted in a pattern of horrific sex crimes. Whereas in areas of refugee resettlement, as near as Boise, refugee resettlement has resulted in an increase in terrorist activity. And whereas, from a humanitarian standpoint, every dollar spent assimilating a single extended family of refugees is a dollar that could be spent making their home country more livable for all their countrymen. Therefore, resolve the Jerome County Republican Central Committee urges the elected Board of Trustees of the College of Southern Idaho to discontinue the entire refugee center immediately. So there, there you go. I mean, I just I came across this yesterday, and I, I, I'm a little confused here. Uh, one is from Jerome. The, I have another one. Uh, we have Jerome and Twin Falls County Republicans. Now, and I, I think in Jerome, that's the entire, that's the core of the Republican Party, saying we've got to just drop this program altogether. I have this coming out of a, out of a neighboring county. Another resolution, and the writer says, at the time the United States Constitution was ratified, the Commerce Clause was not meant or understood to authorize Congress or the federal judiciary to regulate the state courts in the matter of state sub, or substantive law or state judicial procedure, and this has never been modified by any duly ratified amendment to the United States Constitution. At the time, the United States Constitution, the writer says, was ratified. The Commerce Clause was not meant or understood to authorize Congress or the federal judiciary to establish religious, sectarian, or foreign statute or case law as controlling or influential precedent. 
The Twin Falls County Republican Party opposes any attempt by the federal courts to use, implement, refer to, or incorporate a tenet of any body of religious sectarian law into any decision, finding or opinion as controlling or influential authority, and be it further resolved, the Twin Falls County Republican Party opposes any attempt by federal courts to use, implement, refer to, or incorporate any case law or statute from another country or foreign body. Uh, that might uh, that might also happen to deal with uh, religious uh, laws, such as uh, Sharia, for instance, if people were ever to demand that. Now, you have some members of the Supreme Court in Washington, the big one, you know, the one that had those god-awful decisions a couple of weeks ago, Ruth uh, bader meinhoff being one of them. She has uh, stated in the past that she, she has argued in some of her... Uh, her dissents and in, in some of uh, some of the supports that she's written in various cases, she has made reference to international law, laws from other nations. So you already have that. It may not be Sharia, but you have references to laws from elsewhere creeping into American jurisprudence, and it's happening at the highest level. So whenever you pick up a copy of the, the, the Magic Valley News or the, uh, the, the Idaho Statesman or any one of these other left-wing rags, run by people who, 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 who represent only a small fraction of the population of this state, of this region, and they, they claim, well, you know, there's no such thing as this going on, and the, the enemy's not marshalling out in the sagebrush. Baloney. You don't need, you know, once, once you actually allow that camel to get its nose under the tent, you're going to have situations starting to develop like this. Better right now to draw the line and say, here's where it stops, than to wait until we're going to have to have to you know have a much bigger battle when we see the population potentially increase in coming years. So I just I wanted to throw these things out there this morning and, and, and just give you a bit of a rundown. We are right now in the center of that target when it comes to this resettlement program. We have been for several months. There will be a July 20th meeting. I don't have all the particulars on what room and building and the time yet, but there will be another July 20th meeting with the Board of Trustees at the College of Southern Idaho who also oversee this refugee resettlement program, and they will have another opportunity for you as a member of this community to show up and speak at that meeting. Why don't you bring your Emma Lazarus poems along, but we can assure you those are not official policy, that's just poetry. 20 minutes after 8 o'clock. Bill Colley with you this morning on Top Story. Uh, by the way, uh, Trump has gone forward and said something along the lines that uh, many of these immigrants are bringing disease to this country. Wouldn't it be nice if the, the media, instead of just screaming about him being a bigot, would actually go out and investigate his claims? He might be right. Somebody sent me a, a, a note one time when, a, when a, a number of Mexican workers were hired at a rendering plant in Wichita, Kansas, they had an 8,000% increase over a year in drug-resistant tuberculosis. Was there anyone trying to come up with a correlation? Nah, that would be mean-spirited. Hey, look, got a guest coming up in the next hour, former military man, great insight. Those of you, and there's a handful of you who, uh, who are privy to my personal Facebook page, I posted a story there yesterday that, uh, that I came across because establishment media is uh, just simply skirting these issues, saying you're a bigot or a racist if you raise them. But let's try to verify, let's fact check what Donald Trump's talking about. I saw a story yesterday and I posted it to Facebook. Over the last decade, there have been 1,500 illegal immigrants accused in the state of North Carolina alone, 1,500 separate cases accused of rape, many of them involving underage girls. Now, some of those may have been cons cons consensual, as they say, making it only a statutory charge. Uh, but still, there are stories like that that are floating around out there, but you don't read them in the New York Times. You don't see that at CNN, MSDNC. You don't read it in the Washington Post or the L.A. Times. They ignore these things and just keep screaming, you're being mean. Speaking of our, our situation here in southern Idaho, Brigitte Gabriel, who was on the program with us a few weeks ago and she spoke in Caldwell as well, headline from an email she sends along this morning, majority of Muslims in America want option to live under Sharia law. Are we at all surprised by these things? No, of course we're not surprised by these things should also point out at least we're not under any serious threat from that yet. 
Ann Coulter was speaking about that while she was appearing on Sean Hannity's TV show last night, Eric Bowling filling in for Hannity. Uh, take a listen to Ann Coulter. Yes, I mean, it could have been any weekend. I, I notice we've all been warned all all week, watch out for ISIS, watch out for ISIS this weekend. And no, instead, Americans were killed by immigrants. She's referring to the, the case in San Francisco. So we, we've got a, we, we're fighting a two-front war. We've been fighting the, 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 the war with the illegal immigrants. Well, we're not really fighting it because we're ignoring it, right? I mean, from a government standpoint, it's been basically ignored for many, many years. And on the other hand, now we've got another potential front coming with people who could be coming here from the other part of the world, and they could be trying to create havoc here. Maybe this guy in San Francisco is just a cheap, you know, two-bit hoodlum who was playing with a gun. And likely I agree with his, uh, his claim that he accidentally shot the woman, you know, sort of pointing the gun and shooting it off willy-nilly in different directions. But some of these other people who could be coming here they are openly hostile to our way of life, if we could put it that way. I think that that's something we can't ignore. Here's Coulter saying that these events that are taking place in places like San Francisco are not isolated events. It doesn't have to be limited to illegal immigrants. The government is allowing people who have no right to be here into our country, whether legally or illegally. There was also an illegal immigrant who, who hammered his wife um, to death in Texas over the weekend. Ouch. I, I guess that's just called conflict resolution where he comes from. It's 826. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. You can reach our program by giving me a call at 736 0300 or email me at bill.colley at media.com. And uh, she, of course, took an opportunity while she was on that program last night to take a jab at the left. It isn't just American citizens who aren't being protected, but these Republicans and, of course, Democrats, who claim to speak for, oh, the poor, the downtrodden, the working class. No, they're speaking for big business who want their cheap labor and will externalize their costs, both in terms of taxes and in terms of the crime rate. Um, what's striking about the San Francisco story is that it happened in a place liberals might go. Usually it's out in the suburbs. Yeah, it happened on a boardwalk, uh, and that's what's gotten people's attention. Otherwise, they would have said, well, you deserved it if you were a rich Republican living out in a suburb or even a Republican who was just of modest means paying his bills. You're up next. You're on the air on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX. What's on your mind? Yeah, I, I, it's been quite a few years ago. I've lost track now, but a friend of mine that I played City League basketball with in Jerome uh, was driving from, uh, literally driving over to play in a game from Wendell and, uh, an illegal immigrant, uh, hit him. He ran the stop sign and, uh, killed him. And, uh, I asked around about that years ago and I says, well, whatever happened, did, did they ever, what happened to that guy? And the way I understood it, now this could be wrong, and if it is, then somebody can call up and square me away. I'm fine with that. But that they never, ever, he somehow was lost in the shuffle. Now, uh, if I'm wrong, that's fine, but it, it, it just seemed like, you know, if this is something that you and I would have done, uh, we would have been in jail for manslaughter. Yeah. And uh, there would have been no question about it. But uh, no, not these guys, because there's never really any clear plan for what we're going to do with them. You know, uh, one more point, and I'll hang up. You know, they talk about how are we going to round up 20 million illegals. Well, every county, every county has a certain amount of illegals in it. And every county in this nation, we can go in and square this thing away county by county, and it could be done if we cared to do so. I thank you. We need we need that constitutional sheriff's approach, where you give that sheriff that authority. He is the leading constitutional authority, the leading law enforcement authority in any county. He he is above an elected sheriff is above anybody even at the federal level. That's how it was set up in the beginning. We ignore it now. It's eight thirty. I've got to take a short break. More of your telephone calls coming up at seventy. I should note one of our callers was threatened recently by a liberal who recognized our caller's voice on the air. Of course, again, being a liberal, you know, I said yesterday they just they'll slap you like Curly Joe Besser. There's not really much of a threat there. More details on this story on the way in just about four minutes. 
want to remind you things have cooled off, I guess, just a bit for the next few days. Well, relative speaking, right? I mean, relatively speaking. But uh, you you still might want to give, because we'll get hot weather again coming up later this month and into August. You might still want to give the folks at Tint Lady a call. Also keep in mind that year-round, sunlight streaming through your windows can also really have a bleaching effect on your furniture, your carpets, your drapes. Tint in the windows prevents all of that, as well as, of course, cuts down on the, on, the, on the heat that's pouring through and gives you some protection from that in the summer. And they can do this for your home, your office, your automobile. We recommend you give them a telephone call, 736-8469. They do free estimates. You can also get in touch with them at tintladyidaho.com if you're online. Locally owned and operated with 20 years of experience, located at 1887 Highland Avenue East in Twin Falls. Open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. I guess they'll be opening shortly. And uh, Saturday, by appointment only. And remember, don't squint, get tint. And tomorrow we're going to have a guest coming in with us from Trip Family Medicine. Physician assistant Russell Singleton will be here between 8.30 and 9 o'clock in the morning. And he's going to follow up on just some issues. We started talking a little bit about how to stay healthy. and Some things you might do. Uh, we were talking about diet, exercise, and the like over the last few weeks with the folks from the office, and he's going to be going into some more depth about that tomorrow between 8.30 and 9 o'clock in the morning. I really maybe have a warning or two about some of the people out there who are pushing, you know, the snake oil salesmen, who make you a lot of promises when you see them on TV, but they may not be backing backing up what they're talking about. You'll have a chance to chime in as well. Give him a call while he's here in the studio with us with, a, with Better Health, with Trip Family Medicine right here on Top Story. On News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. And remember, I'd like to tell you over there a great slogan life's too short not to feel good. Love that one. A couple of things we were talking about in the last half hour, and I think they're very much related. We were talking about illegal immigrants. One of our callers had said to me that a friend of his had been killed by an illegal immigrant, immigrant driver who ran a stop sign, and he said he'd never heard about any, you know, uh, the case ever being, uh, you know, concluded that perhaps they may have just packed the guy off and sent him out of the country. Who knows? I have a friend's wife. She can't walk today because she was driving down a street one day when an illegal immigrant uh, crashed and, 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 you know, and and crunched her car so badly she had a foot crushed. I have the wife of another friend. She was driving down a street one day, and luckily she came out of it without any scrapes or bruises, but an illegal immigrant came racing down the street and knocked the window, in fact, the mirror off one side of her car. And she could get nothing out of it because the guy was not insured. This is the argument. Well, if we just give them driver's licenses, and then they can go and do all those things, and then they can use their driver's license. And, and even though we don't have ID laws, maybe they can go vote for more Democrats. How about they leave? I mean, wouldn't that be much more effective? <laughs> How about they leave? I think that this is, this, this is the way that we should approach this. Uh, I have a friend I worked with. He's, he's been in talk radio off and on for years. In fact, uh, he worked at a music station. He worked for Buck Owens in Bakersfield, California years ago. He flatlined as they were airlifting him to a hospital twice. He'd been riding his motorcycle when an illegal immigrant ran a stop sign and sent him flying about 200 feet, rolling and skidding down, uh, down a highway. So these things do happen out there. And we, we're told, well, you know, it would be mean-spirited if we... If, why? Why is it? Isn't it more mean spirited that they come here and that some of them rape and that some of them kill and that some of them can't drive? I mean, I, I don't, I don't get the logic of the lefty out there when he tells me that. Eight thirty-seven. You're up next with Bill Colley on Top Story on News Radio thirteen ten KLIX. Hey, good morning, Bill. Hey, it's uh, it's extremely irresponsible and naive of us to assume that uh, even though these refugees and stuff are are probably coming here because they are in a war torn region or whatever the case may be. It's, uh, it's irresponsible for us to assume that they're going to take on our culture. We've got to remember, these people, their human rights in the countries they're coming from, they don't respect the basic human rights that we do, and that's simple things that we, we take for granted. And so to assume that they're going to come here and assimilate, just, just dump them into our culture and give them a job or an education or whatever the case may be, you know, we... We we fought hard in this country for things like women's rights that they're not even close to in their country. Right. So they're not just going to snap to it when they come here. Well, and thank you for the call. The self-loathing left, you know, it loves every other culture in the world and preaches multiculturalism, but for one culture, it can't stand ours. 
He wants to destroy ours. Uh, I heard a guy driving in this morning on uh, on a Fox newscast at about 5 o'clock, and he was talking, saying, yeah, multiculturalism until it comes to southern culture or rural culture. You understand? Then that's got to go. They're trying to destroy that. That's that's the goal that these people have. There's a guy who is a Guatemalan immigrant from uh, from uh, who lives in California now complaining that uh, Americans aren't doing enough to alleviate the poverty that he sees around him among many of the immigrants. In California is what they call a multi, well, all of California, but Los Angeles especially. He, he, he mentions a book, a book from the 1990s that called it a third world city, and he said it definitely has become that with the, with the terrible poverty mixed in with a lot of the wealth. So you're supposed to give him money. He came here from somewhere else, and you know, just despite the fact that you worked hard for it, your ancestors worked hard to build at one time what was the greatest economy in the world, we're supposed to give it all away because it would be mean otherwise. How come they didn't work and build it where they came from? Well, <laughs> no, that's not an answer. That's just mumbling. I'll take more of your telephone calls on this topic in just a couple of minutes. Short break on the way. Bill Colley with you. Also, Lieutenant Colonel Steve Heil joining us just after the 9 o'clock news. He's going to be talking about rainbow flags on Air Force bases and the buzzing of the California coast by the Russian, uh, Russian military over the weekend. The historian Victor Davis Hanson grew up in the Imperial Valley of California, which, of course, before uh, the current regimes in California took over and diverted all of the, uh, the, the fresh water into San Francisco Bay to save some guppies. Imperial Valley was, of course, the leading farming area probably in the world. And he, he went home to visit a few years ago, and he commented, it's third world. And there are people stealing all of the copper wire and all the other metal. and But a lot of it, from his perspective, is coming because that third world moved north, and we allowed it to happen. It's 844 71. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX, as well as News Radio 1310.com. Trying to mesh this, this whole notion that we can mesh cultures together, I think, is are we going to be able to mesh our culture with ISIS? Are we going to be able to mesh our culture with... The, the point of the matter is, you come here, if you're going to settle here, you learn to speak English, and you adopt our mores. I mean, I did this, this is not brain surgery. That's how it worked for the first couple of centuries. And ever since then, it's been broken down because all of these Marxist-Leninists on campus, they just despise the United States, and they see this as their opportunity. We have a caller with us. You're up next on Top Story with Bill Colley and What's on Your Mind. Good morning, Bill. Uh, my wife, about 15 years ago, got hit head on by the illegal immigrant, which fled Ouch. after it happened. And she is still suffering today from problems with that. So, you know, it's a problem. And I don't care what anything the left says. They say it. The immigration is broken. All this is broken. They're breaking it because they for- fail to follow the law. And that's where we're having our biggest problems. I was really upset this morning when I was watching a bunch of actors read how they should deal with uh, laws and stuff in our country, which is basically what our forefathers wrote if the country went south. And I don't think that means what they think it means. Well, and, and I, I thank you for the call. I was thinking about what you, your comment about immigration being broken. Let, let's be honest. You keep hearing that even Chris Christie, who's really a Democrat, says, well, you know, border fence won't work. Works in Israel. Uh, Charles Krauthammer once said, when he was told, you know, fences don't work, he said, then why is there one around the White House? <laughs> Um, don't give me an answer like that. It, it, that that's logical. I, I can't deal with it. I'm sorry. You're next. You're on the air on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com. Good morning, Bill. You know, it's really interesting. I just got my uh, car insurance renewal, and about 15% of that has to do with uninsured and underinsured motorists. You know, and so supposedly when we go in to get those uh, stickers, you know, for our license plates, you're supposed to have proof of insurance, but nobody ever asked me for that. And so there's a law that's not being enforced to start with. And, uh, 
But the bigger picture is, way back in the 1950s, Norman Dodds was a special investigator for the Reese Committee of the U.S. House of Representatives, and he was asked to go out to some of the big foundations and ask why they were supporting socialist uh, causes around the world. And the conclusion was, talking to uh, H. Roland Gaither of the Ford Foundation, who said, we're under directives to so alter life in this country that it'll become a third world nation so we can comfortably merge into a glorious one world government under the United Nations. See, the United Nations had just been formed, so that was part of that agenda. And that's what's going on. They're making a third world country out of this. And Ann Coulter and the rest of them can see that. But our politicians just look the other way, it seems like. Yeah, and and, and I, thank you for the call. I think that there's a, there's a point to be made there, too, as well. A Ford Foundation, not affiliated with Ford Motor. I mean, that, that, that broke off long, long ago. Uh, and so people who run Ford Motor Company may have one line of thinking, but the Ford Motor Company... Uh, you know, it's, it's not the same. Uh, it's, it, and, and the Ford Foundation is actually run by a lot of people who are one-worlders. They're globalists, and that's the, that's what they're trying to do. It, it, and, and that's not a secret. That's, a, that's fairly open. You know, when you have people, newspaper columnists at the New York Times, who are writing and saying that China really has it right when it comes to how to build an economy, you know how they built that economy? They were taking school children. And they were chaining them to their desks, kids eight years old, and having them make fireworks, for instance. And then these cheap, faulty fireworks could be sold all over the world. Sometimes, though, there were accidents and the schools blew up, killing all of the little eight-year-olds. But that was just a, you know, they thought that was just a necessary part of progress. And who cares? I mean, you know, we got a billion and a half. I mean, what the heck? Uh, just, you know, a fewer mouths to feed, that's all. And, and they don't really have any Christian values that would obviously... Sadden them. I mean, I'm not saying that they aren't sad by the losses of their children, but if you were a parent and you were saddened by it and you went out and you said, I want the government to do something, then they would say, huh, you do? Hey, you look pretty young. I bet your kidneys are in good shape. Strap them down and remove the kidneys. We got an old 85-year-old Weezer here on the Politburo who needs them. This, and you got people like Thomas Friedman, Friedman of the New York Times, well, the first time I got it right, who's saying that we should be more like them. And, you know, what what do you think the North American Free Trade Agreement was about back in the early 1990s? It is about, and people say, well, you're joking when you say that there is a currency called the Amero that will become the North American currency. Except, of course, that there already are plates that have been made for this thing to print it. (laughs) This is not, it's there. There are people who've been dreaming about this for a very, very long time. It's 850. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. They're also going to uh, try and reduce the population. There was a fellow in Britain, some college professor who's got some influence on government there. A couple of years ago, he issued a paper saying that we need to reduce the population of the world by 90% in order to save the planet. Well, I don't know about you. Um, the 10% who'll get to live. I got a funny feeling this is not going to be done by a lottery. It's going to be done by simply culling the herd uh, through abortion, uh, sterilization, uh, you know, uh, making sure that we have abortifacient drugs and lots of contraceptives, and, and they'll do it that way. And so they've got to promote all of these things, and they've, got, and they've got to break down your religious faith. They've got to tell you that marriage is no longer about raising children. It's about loving somebody or, or something. Uh, it could be something that brays or nays or moves. But, you know, that's that's the direction that we happen to be going. Maybe that's why this is being encouraged is because you can't have children in a natural manner with a, with a horse or with someone who's of the same sex as you. So you, you've, you've got all of these things, I think, that are being promoted out there, which seem to a lot of us to be just plainly wicked. But this is the viewpoint. And, and you know that the people, the 10% who will survive... What's the old book, The Handmaid's Tale? And they made it into a movie with Robert Duvall. Also talks about how certain people who've got some clout, they'll be the 10% who survive. You know, that's, and then I've been reading that they think they're close to a breakthrough where human beings would never die. So the 10% can keep on living all by themselves around the world. 
have all the beachfront property they want. They can eat all the mangoes they want. And they can go skiing whenever and wherever they want. And they just need a handful of domestic servants around. Aldous Huxley in Brave New World, you may remember there were these people who were genetically engineered. They were like little mole people who worked underground in the mines. So yeah, we're, science is working on all of these things. You can kind of see this all coming together. From a Christian standpoint, that might say we're pretty much close to the, uh, to the end of the world. And uh, do we welcome that or not? I... I'd like to just have a few more years here. There's a couple of things I want to see before I go. That's how I look at it. 853 now. Bill Colley with you this morning on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. 72. Uh, probably 90 today, and then it'll cool off supposedly the rest of the week. You can give us a call at the at the show today by dialing 736-0300. That's 736-0300. Or drop me an email at Bill dot collie at townsquaremedia.com. And, you know, we talked just a briefly, for a brief moment in the last segment of the program about how certain cultures have to be respected, but other cultures are not respected, and those cultures have to be destroyed. And I referenced rural or southern culture in this country, and really I think they're one and the same. You, you likely, if you live in the Magic Valley of Idaho, you have a lot more in common with a guy in Alabama than you likely do with someone who lives in Seattle or Spokane or, or even Salt Lake City. And, and that's just because of the nature of the lifestyle. You know, rural, lots of open space, farming, lots of churches still in operation, people not running away from that and, and adopting all sorts of other crazed philosophies. So you have a lot more in common with all of that. I was, uh, I was talking a bit earlier about uh, the fact that they like to eradicate everything Southern. This comes from uh, Minnesota. Albert Lee, Minnesota is a small city in the southern part of the state near the Iowa state line. I, uh, I had an opportunity once to talk to a fellow about a radio job there when I was much, much younger. It is a rural place, small city, a uh, big farming area, a volunteer firefighter, and again, not a paid firefighter, a guy who goes out and volunteers to risk his life fighting fires for other people which is a, you know, a great service, someone who's willing to risk their lives for another. He decided during the course of a parade the other day for Independence Day to not only have an American flag on his fire truck, but he put up a, a battle flag, the old battle flag of the Army of Northern Virginia, which was carried by Robert E. Lee and his troops. He's no longer a volunteer fireman. I feel bad for the families down there. But it wasn't the flag that did it. I take full responsibility for what I did. And he says, I feel bad for the families down there, meaning South Carolina. But he's trying to make out a point here that the flag had nothing to do with it. It hadn't, But again, it's because it's part of a culture that people in the elites don't like. This guy who killed all of those people in the church, what if he, instead of being pictured with a, with a Confederate flag had been holding a jar of pecans. Would we outlaw pecans? Would we smash them all? Would we be told we can't sell them in stores any longer? Well, you can grow your own on private property, but don't bring them out in public. How about a peach? If he had, if he had been holding a peach, would we have to smash all the peaches or just say you can't sell peaches any longer? Because we're getting into ridiculous territory. Mark Thiessen, who writes at the, the Washington Post, he's one of the rare, he's slightly right of center. I mean, he's from a Washington Post perspective, he's a conservative former speechwriter for President George W. Bush. He had a great point today. Did you know that this newspaper is named for a slaveholder? It's right here on our masthead. The name of a man who for 56 years held other human beings in bondage on his Virginia plantation. A man, according to the official Mount Vernon website, who frequently utilized harsh punishment against the enslaved population, including whippings. This dreaded symbol of oppression is delivered to the doorsteps and inboxes of hundreds of thousands of people each morning. It's time, he says, and he's being sarcastic, to rename the Washington Post. He said, do you think that's stupid? He says, you're right. But there's a lot of stupidity going around. Our country is in a miasma of political correctness, so where does it end? Are we going to rename our nation's capital and Washington State for that matter? Should we close the Jefferson Memorial named for a man who never freed his slaves? How about renaming Arlington, which is named after Robert E. Lee's estate? Or Washington and Lee University, names for not one but two slave owners? Or Fort Hood, named for Confederate General John Bell Hood, 
at Fort Bragg, named for Braxton Bragg, military advisor to Confederate President Jefferson Davis. He says the impulse, this is the writer of the column, to wipe away history is Stalinist. Stalin would airbrush people out of pictures if he didn't want, want them seen and actually have people added to him, his, his own image added to pictures later on to make it seem as if he had the blessing of, uh, of, of, of Ol- Olyanov. Uh, by the way, their, their names were party names. They were taken after rivers and mountains and hills. So Trotsky was actually Davidovich. Lenin was uh, Olyanov. And, uh, and I believe it was Sugishvili became Joseph Stalin. But it just shows you the direction we're going in this country and the, the, their efforts to destroy what we know as an American culture continue unabated with open borders and with refugee resettlement programs. And it's not going to stop unless you speak up about it. If you just sit there and say, hey, nothing I can do, well, welcome to the new world. Lieutenant Colonel Steve Heil, he's uh, retired from the U.S. Air Force, scheduled to join us for about 15 minutes following news from Fox in just a moment. Fox News at 9 o'clock. One more hour of Bill Colley ahead on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX, as well as online, where you can hear us anywhere all over the world at newsradio1310.com. <laughs> 